Hey groups, um, I cannot believe it. We are already wrapping up our group season and I'm excited um, to end in the, actually the first week of Throne. So we just get a glimpse of what the Throne is and uh, be able to have conversation in it with groups. Um, but I'm excited for you guys in this summer. If you didn't have a conversation with your group about what the summer is going to look like, uh, Chantel and I have talked and we're uh, giving monthly ideas and monthly packages. Um, and I believe this coming month is S'more Night. So coming up with one night over the month of June to get together as a group and have s'mores together. There's a lot of fun things that are going to be happening this summer, so make sure you guys stay engaged and um, continue to have a relationship with each other, even though it's summer and even though we don't have a lot of content going on for groups. So um, with that being said, I want to jump right into our group's content for this week. We started out a new series of The Throne. Um, what we saw is that the Israelites looked around the world and they saw a bunch of city, or a bunch of nations that had kings. Um, and really, God was supposed to be their king. And God was supposed to be the one on the throne, but they wanted someone who was like in person. And it's like, okay, God finally said, fine, I will give you a king, but you realize the things that kings are going to do. And we see that already playing out in the first one of Saul and how he on the throne, did things that were good for him. Um, and we see that played out in uh, this first part of this series. So I'm excited for these, uh, these questions coming up for you. If you've got kids in the room, there are some kids' questions on the top. Uh, groups, group leaders, go ahead and walk these kids through that, and then we'll jump right into the normal content. Question number one, this is looking back to last week. How were you able to apply something that you learned from Samson or Japheth? Um, what did you, how, how did that challenge go from this past week? For question number two, I want to set it up a little bit. Um, if you're anything like me and you're listening to the message in some way over the course of a weekend, uh, there's times where I feel convicted by the Holy Spirit of something. And when I say that, if you don't know what convicted means, it's like you feel a sense that you need to respond in some way. Maybe that's in action, uh, changing an action that you're currently doing. Maybe it's starting something new in your life, starting a new action. Uh, but conviction is often placed on us by the Holy Spirit to get us to change in some way. Um, over the course of this weekend, after you heard the teaching and this message, is there anything that the Holy Spirit convicted you to do? We talk quite a bit in the message about the fear of man and the fear of the Lord. Here's the question in this. Where do you see the fear of man overshadowing your fear of the Lord? So overtaking your fear of the Lord. What does it mean for you to fear the Lord? For question number four, I want you to start by reading 1 Samuel 15, uh, verse 13 through 26. And here's the questions out of that. Number four, what did you learn about God from this passage? What jumped out to you? And how does this passage depict the pattern of insecurity, compromise, and justification. Where do you see those being played out in these verses? All right, and for number five, um, I just want to spend some time in prayer together. A few weeks ago, we had a whole 
um, whole message dedicated to prayer, prayer and how um, God has asked us to pray and what that relationship looks like when we do pray. Um, I want you to take what you've learned from a few weeks ago and apply it right now. Um, and spend some time in intentional prayer with your group. Um, ask for prayer requests. And not only just pray together now, but hold each other accountable to some of those things. Ask how those things are going. How are those prayer requests um, coming to fruition? So talk about that later in the coming weeks as we get into summer. Be like, hey, you talked about this. How is that going in your life now? So spend some time, uh, spend 10 or 15 minutes just talking about things that you need prayer in, and then as a group, respond in prayer together. All right, number six, and this is the challenge, um, and it's really a challenge for this summer. Uh, the Foundry Church has a weekly rhythm that consists of the weekend gathering, so Sunday or Monday, um, where we all gather in one space and worship. Two is being in devotions, being in the Word of God, and three is in groups. Now, since we don't have groups for the summer, I want you guys to be more intentional about what it looks like to be in the other parts of the weekly rhythm, what it means to be here more often on um, over the weekend and being in the Word of God more. Uh, for me, uh, I often can do really well the groups and the, the big worship. I like being with people, so those come more naturally to me. But for me, the challenge is going to be to be more intentional about devotions and being in the Word of God more and allowing Him to speak through those words. And I'm excited for the summer, and I hope you take that challenge to heart and uh, continue to be transformed into the image of God as we grow in community together. So hope you guys have a great summer. I, um, I hope that this doesn't mean that you guys are going to stop meeting. Um, I hope you're able to still ca catch up over the course of the summer. Um, and I cannot wait to see and hear how God is doing things in your life. Have a great week.